Hi Church, welcome to 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. We hope you're encouraged and blessed by this morning's devotional. Good morning Church and welcome to day 10 of our 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. My name is Pastor Bumi and it's my delight to bring you the devotional for this day. Uh, 10 is the number of completion and the completion of a circle. And I believe in the first nine days, you've been really keen into what God is doing and we've still got about 11 days to go. And I trust that even on this day, it's gonna be a new cycle, a new alignment, and your frequency is going to another level. So I will be talking about it is your season to see what God is doing. It is your season to see what God is doing. And then uh, at the end, I will also be praying for our men, for the men. So um, let's go. Um, one of the things I believe is that fasting does not really change God. Fasting changes you. It changes I. It changes us. It transforms us. It takes us to another level. It improves and upgrades our frequency so we can connect more to what God is doing in our lives. Uh, many a times, you know, God is doing something, but we don't really see it. So the scripture that I'll be using this morning is in uh, Revelation 3, 8. And it says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Hallelujah. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Um, first of all, I just want to say that God knows your deed. God sees where you've been. God knows what your struggles have been. God knows how you've been trying hard for the family. God knows what you've been doing in the workplace. God knows all your struggles, but it appears that maybe you have not seen results, but that is about to change. God is telling you that don't think God is not there. Don't think God is forgotten you. Don't think that God is left you behind. God is saying right now, I know your deeds. I see you. You're not hidden. You are in my radar and I see what your deeds have been. The other thing we need to know is that God is saying, I've seen your deed, but now see I have placed before you. So God is not saying that it's now for you, inviting you to now see what the Lord is doing. The story is told of a pastor who is new in town. So he's just gone uh, door to door trying to invite people to church. So he came to this place and uh, he was knocking on this man's house. He couldn't hear that there's someone in the house, and then, but the door wasn't opened. So he left his business card and he says, uh, uh, Revelation 3.20, and he left it there. So this man, then it was Sunday, so on the Sunday, the man sent the same card to the pastor in church through one of the ushers. And beneath what the pastor had written, he does also written Genesis 3.10. And this is what it says. In the pastor's words, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone opens, I will come inside. But underneath, what this man had said was in Genesis 3.10 is, I heard your voice. I was afraid because I was naked. Hallelujah. Now, the, 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 the reason for that is that sometimes we feel naked. And our nakedness could be because of our fears, our traumas, our worries, our anxieties, and we don't want to connect more. But a time of prayer and fasting enables us, like I said before, to get transformed, to get more intimate, to be able to glean more and lean more to what God is doing. Because God knocking on our door is actually an open door for us. When God knocks, we need to be sensitive enough and we need to be in a place of consecration whereby our fears, our nakedness is no hindrance for us to be able to access and see what God is doing in our life. The other thing I want us to know is that uh, the door is before us. It says, behold, I have placed before you an open door. Hallelujah. Sometimes we look too 
far behind. We look too much behind us. You know, I want you to know, God is saying this day that whatever God has for you is in front of you. It's not in your rear view mirror. It's not in your back. Whatever, you know, God is saying that God is not going to use whatever you have lost. God is going to use whatever you have left. So it's very important. He said, I've placed this door, open door, not in your back, not around you, not on your side, but right in front of you, before you. Hallelujah. That's, uh, that calls for joy right there, that you haven't missed what God is going to do. It's not gone. You have not missed that opportunity. That opportunity is right in front of you. And the last thing I want to say before I pray is that it says, which no man can shut. Hallelujah. Can that back on up? That calls for celebration because sometimes we feel, well, if God does something for us, then it could be taken away. But God is saying, look, it doesn't matter. The only thing that could be taken away from you is what man gives you. But if it is God that has opened the door, it says, no man born of a woman can shut it. Hallelujah. And that is good news for everyone listening to my voice this morning. That whatever God has done for you, the open door that God is, it says, no man can shut. You know, um, for Joseph, for instance, in the Bible, you know, the coat could be taken away from him because it was given by man. It was given by Jacob. But then the royal coat, the royal robe that was given by the king, Pharaoh, and the king of kings, no one can take it. You know, the world may take away your coat, but no one can take away your character. Hallelujah. So let's key in. When God is giving you something, when God is opening the door, key into what God is doing, not what man is doing. Because once it's God that is doing it, it says no one can shut it. So those four points I want you to take hold of on this day 10. That is God sees and knows your deeds, where you've been, your struggles. And also it sees, it's inviting you to say now, see what God is doing and that what God is doing is before you is not in your rear view it's not past you it's still in front of you you still have the opportunity and then no one can shut it hallelujah on this note I just want to pray for our men I want to pray for our men father I thank you in the name of Jesus because your sovereignty oh Lord is unquestionable father I thank you because you have called us as men you have called us to stand in the gap I come into alignment and in agreement with every man you know I call them every man forth from the four corners of the world uh, and using the men at the crib church as a point of reference and a point of contact I pray that our men oh Lord thank you because our men will begin to take their place oh Lord they will begin to know that they are the head and not the tail and that they are above only and not beneath oh Lord I come against any uh, any plan of the enemy to to kind of frustrate and uh, change that genetic code that you have placed in our men. I come against every ill definition of what a man is in our world. I come against anything that the devil will want to throw at us, oh Lord. My Lord and my God, I frustrate it and I cause every generational cause right from the very root, even like the fig, the fig tree. Oh Lord, it withers even right now. Our men will begin to take their stand. Our men will begin to know that yes, they are peculiar people. They are holy, holy, holy people. Oh Lord, oh Lord, my, they are the holy priesthood, Lord. My Lord and my God, that there is royalty in them, oh Lord. I thank you because our men, oh Lord, you will begin to turn the hearts of the men to their uh, sons and the hearts of the sons to their men. And I pray for our young ones as well, our young boys and our, our, our sons, our, our young boys, oh Lord, and the young men. And you know, the Bible said that when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I pray that our men will begin to step up to that next level. You know, as a child, you speak before you understand. But as a man, we need to understand before we speak. Oh Lord, hallelujah, that our men will begin to love their wives. Oh Lord, take care of their family, love their wives, even as Christ loved the church. And then also, that our men will be able to know that they've been called for such a time as this. That the definition that the word is giving them they will be able to reject it and know their identity in God Father, I thank you O oh Lord that you are here doing great things and you continue to just usher us into that place of purpose into that place of destiny but I know that in the past oh Lord we have done things that we have not seen but in this season we we'll begin to see things more than we have done Oh Lord, we will no longer will, will no longer with will 
be able to do in order to see, but we begin to see because of what we have done. That is the promise of God for us. That is the, 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 the promise in this season of Open Doors. And I pray that I thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to be able to stand, for giving us the passion, oh Lord, to be able to key in in this day that things are beginning to change for us. You said that uh, you're doing a new thing for us and that the old things have passed away that will just position us in a place that we can see what the Lord is doing. The Lord said, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you, not behind you, open door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. Ladies, gentlemen, and men in particular, this very day, let us walk into that open door that God has already placed before us. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you all, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Amen. We truly hope that you were encouraged from today's devotional. Our heart is that not only would you get something from what was shared today, but that you would share this link with a friend or a family member who would be blessed by today's devotion or even come to know about the love of Jesus. Have the most incredible day and we look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. God bless.